Hi, this is Tim Hamilton, the co-host of the Maryland Crabs, and I'm here with a crab cake for your listening pleasure. What's a crab cake? Well, it's not quite a full episode. It's just a little snippet. Stay tuned and check it out. Make sure you check us out on themarylandcrabs.com. You can follow us on Twitter at MD Crabs Podcast or find us on Facebook at the Maryland Crabs Podcast. Don't forget, subscribe, rate us, iTunes. Go there now. And it's another Maryland Crab Cake. Though I am at the Makerspace, and being a drinker, I keep wanting to say Maker's Mark, which would be awesome if you had Maker's Mark. Do we have Maker's Mark? Unfortunately, not on location. Can you 3D print Maker's Mark? No. Not with that attitude. We could try. <laughs> See, that's a can-do attitude that I kind of like. So I'm here with Jack Lipinski. Oh, no, not Jack Lipinski. Lipinski is the, um, that's Dr. Drill. Do you know Dr. Drill? No, I don't. No. So it's uh, Jack Warpinski? Correct. Sorry, I'm Irish, so I don't know. Yeah. And Dan Hahn, and I know that because my wife's German, and Russell Miller. So right. those are, the, so you are you guys board members of Makerspace? Or are you the founders or the creators? Or are you just the guys who were here when I knocked on the door? So Jack's the board president, and I would say like the A number one founder. I'm the vice president, and I've been a cheerleader for Jack to do all the hard work. So if Jack uh, goes to prison or he dies... Not that I want you to die, Jack, but then you take over. Unfortunately, yes. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate for everyone, I think. But no, no. Um, Dan is uh, not a board member, but he's a highly involved member and uh, has been with us since the start. I think oh. I was just here when you knocked on the door. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to lay it out for everybody. So, we're in, uh, we're off West Street at. 42 Hudson. Hudson Street. So it's an industrial park back here. So I just see a lot of car window tinters and electricians and yeah. all those sort of guys. And down below, we're in the, the uh, maker space. And it looks like it's about, what, 16, maybe, maybe 1,200 square feet. Yeah. Of- yeah. The whole space is actually uh, 1,800 square feet, but part of it is uh, is finished. So I'd say it's about 1,200 square feet of right. so actual it's in- workshop. So just to set the, the, the scene for everyone, I'm surrounded. We have bunch of tables are sitting here, a bunch of woodworking and other kind of equipment around. We have a bunch of 3D printers, and I'm sitting right next to a really impressive one, and uh, then a bunch of equipment I don't recognize. Yeah, we've got a full uh, electronics bench there. Uh, we have a CNC router, uh, which is similar to a 3D printer, but it actually cuts uh, wood or plastic. Um, it's controlled by your computer. My computer? Uh, not your computer. Because that would be awesome. Be. Yeah. It's, you just load the software onto it, and if you know what you're doing, you can use really any computer to control Oh, it. if I knew what I was doing. Yeah. See, that's the caveat. Yeah. You that's the asterisk class. right there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, give everyone the concept of what this is. And everyone so, just looked at each other. You guys really got to get your story yeah. straight. Yeah. Like just, we don't have a uh, spokesman yet. But yeah, it's basically a shared workshop where people that are interested in um, tech or making or building or computers come to... Uh, you know, work with others on those topics um, and also share their uh, knowledge and learn from others. So kind of a think tank, but with tools. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, we, you do have access to uh, more expensive tools than you might have access to on your own. Right. Um, it's kind of like a cost sharing type of uh, setup. So a the- good analogy that I make is um, it's like a gym or a library, but instead of workout machines, you have shop tools and space or library like instead of books and computers you have shop tools and that kind of stuff so you're paying a membership and with the membership you get access to all of the tools that are in here and all i mean probably you have to pay for any of the materials you use right so if you're gonna do a 3d printing you got to pay for the magic that makes the 3d things yeah right and we we try to go a bit beyond just being a storefront where you can pay a membership to come and use the tools we we our real goals are to be a, a community establishment like a library which is what i kind of brought that up and and to be able to uh be a resource for people in the community to come and use tools that they don't have the space or the resources to afford and then also to have outreach to um help train people you know expose young kids to to technical work technical concepts you know and it makes steam education kind of come alive and really uh take root in in young kids or to expose them to like trades work like carpentry or woodworking or uh metal work that kind of thing so you cover all disciplines here it's everything from metalworking woodworking electronics uh, all, all just pretty much everything that's the goal. Yeah, we're, we're still working yet. on getting the uh, the metalworking side uh, set up. Well, how new um, are you here? 
Uh, we actually just moved in July 1st. We got access to the building. I, it's pristine. So I'm looking around. Yeah, yeah. The, the light, I was talking about the lighting here. It's a, it's really cool, thin bars of LED lights. Like I've yeah. seen. I, I take a look at it and I look back down at you guys and I'm blind. <laughs> but, uh, but everything is clean. There's no sawdust yet. There's no fingers lying around or blood yeah. marks. It's, well, one of the rules is you do have to do a good job of cleaning up after yourself. You know, after you're done your project, uh, it is a shared space. So, um, you know, all the members are pretty good about, you know, cleaning the shop after themselves now you have a bunch of classes and everything too so it's like for you know i'm as far as woodworking goes i can do like a rudimentary like picnic bench mm-hmm. with instructions but if i'm doing anything that's more fan- i like this stuff right but i don't you know i don't know my father wasn't handy so i don't know how to do any of that stuff but so if i wanted to learn how to get better at carpentry or something like that you have seminars and classes that, that I can yes do? that's that's the goal i mean we've only had the doors open here for less than a month um so we've been uh, focused on you know getting moved in but this august we're looking to uh to start a couple classes a week on a bunch of different topics um, and it's all volunteers who come in so if, so if i know right, something right. in particular about you know metalworking or even some niche of that yeah i can come in absolutely Yep. And you, you're going to do it for kids too, right? So Correct. Do you go as yes. far as like coding or anything like that? Or is it just going to be like the hardware? No, yeah, really, there's a lot of people interested in uh, computer science and coding. So we'll be doing that as well. There was something kind of similar to this. It was with the Raspberry Pi. And actually one of your members, Robert Bell, he was telling me about it. Mm-hmm. And it was over in uh, Edgewater where I guess it was a, uh, a Raspberry Pi club for, for kids and what have you. And it was sponsored by a book bookstore over there, one of the children's bookstore. Okay. And we went to a meeting just kind of see what it was all about. And there's a lot of kids there, but I mean, there was a, there was probably 50 or 60 kids there who were interested in, in the whole Raspberry Pi thing, which I don't know anything about. Yeah. And, you know, I'd like to do it with my son, but I don't, I don't have any clue. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty amazing uh, microcontroller, actually. It's basically a little computer you can put in your pocket and program it to really do whatever you want. Um, um, I'd like to introduce you to my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to program anything. That's, I have Alexa yeah. now. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to turn on the lights anymore. Yeah. That's for poor people. I just <laughs> tell her what to do and there we go. <laughs> but uh, actually, Robert was talking about that, how he wanted to be, he, I asked him how he was going to be spending his weekend and he said he was going to be building something with his garage door opener that he was going to automate it, that he could tell it to open and close and just, and I nodded and smiled, but I didn't well, stop listening to him halfway through. But if I could teach my son to do it, this is a place to do it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We've got a few Raspberry Pis running right here right now. What do they do out of curiosity? Here? In general. Well, so right now they are, um, we built uh, an RFID system to allow members access uh, to the space based on a tag that we issue. So the Raspberry Pi actually controls the garage door, authenticates the access request. So Jack was saying that he he showed me the fob coming in where or was that I, mean, I guess it was Jack where yeah, you have the fob yeah. that uh, you know you walk up and everything automatically opens and it's going to work with the equipment too so that right. uh, people can't walk out or right. by accident no one we're not accusing anyone of anything but yeah. it, just, it happens the drills just walk away it's but, uh, so for the equipment it's more of a safety standpoint we want to make sure that people you know take the the safety training on the class before they have access to the machine. We don't we don't plan on having uh, any full time staff, um, so you know any member could uh, just be working by themselves. So you come in at three in, in the morning space. if you wanted, or if you wanted to, yeah. Or if your wife was pissed at you, and you yeah. Get in yeah. I've spent many a night here yes. uh, with a sleeping bag. So all right, now tell me about this three D printer. I'm looking at this this printer right now that's about the size of a small refrigerator, a medium sized refrigerator. Um, yeah, so the the dimension behind you there, that large one, uh, that was that's actually an industrial grade three D printer that was uh, donated by uh, Amtech up in Severna Park. So that's a very uh, capable machine. Um, they use that in the you know for professional uh, prototypes. Um, and then we have a couple uh, smaller three uh, D printers, more of the hobbyist grade three D printers, uh, scattered about the space here. So what do you plan on doing with them? Three D printing is pretty cool technology. The dimension. Uh, SST that Jack was talking about is a dual head ex- extruder printer. Uh, it's all used as FDM, which stands for what is it? Filament deposit method or something like that. But just basically, that uh, the extruder is this little hot head and it, and it puts a little bead of plastic little down. Hot head. Right? It's an Italian lady. She's <laughs> yeah. really pissed all the exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. It's like a puts a little bead of plastic down, like a, your regular printer puts a you know, a dot of ink, right? And then it, it makes a lot of dots to make a word. The dots of plastic make a, a three-dimensional object. So it doesn't do it in just the, the X and Y plane. It actually, like, prints it out of the filled plane. So what do you guys use it for? 
I used it just the other week to uh, make a, a jig for a job that I was doing for my professional life, and then also to to make a kind of a very light uh, disposable piece that I used in the repair. So you can you can very quickly uh, make some complicated parts that. Uh, when I say complicated, like the shape of them, you know, or it would, if you were to make it with traditional methods, it would take you, an, you know, weeks or something like that to do it. And you wouldn't be able to really get tight geometry tolerances on hmm. it. So this place is really going to be everything to everybody. So how did it start? So who who is who was the brainchild behind or whose brainchild was this? I guess kind of our group had just started on um, on Meetup. So back in February, I just posted a, uh, I think it was just an exploratory meeting on uh, starting a makerspace in Annapolis. I expected like maybe uh, four or five people to show up, but it was it was closer to 20 actually. So, you know, seeing seeing that support that we had just from our first meeting, um, we, we just... You're going to pay for that. Yeah, right. Oh, no, Russ. just print a new, 3D print a new one. Russ, are you bleeding? Uh, You're going to have to call that into the safety director. No, I think I'm going to pick up that blood. (laughs) But anyway, we decided to just start meeting um, two times a month back in February until we actually opened a uh, makerspace in Annapolis. Initially, I thought it would take about a year or so, but it it happened uh, a lot quicker. So how did you get all the money for all this? Uh, Actually, it it all all came from uh, the members so far. So as of right now, we still don't have any um, money, you know, big Oh. Big donations. We have some money, hmm. but uh, once we signed the lease uh, for the space, a lot of the initial members, you know, they, they paid for their first uh, couple months membership ahead of time, um, just so we had some money to work with. So tell me about the membership. I guess I know how it works. Is it basically you're renting? You know, you're basically getting a membership like you would with the gym, right. except in my case, you would you would pay for it and then not go. Right. But you want to go to this, right? So. Yeah. Uh, so there's all the equipment, and it's uh, you pay for the materials. You know, mm-hmm. if you're going to build something, you're kind of it's cooperative where people help each other out. So what's involved? If I wanted to do that, how much does it cost me? So it's fifty dollars a month, and for fifty dollars, you get twenty four seven access to the space. I mean, it's not a business; it's a five hundred one c three nonprofit. So really, just a, a club of uh, of people interested in in making. So nobody's making any money off of this. It's all volunteer run. So we're trying to keep it, you know, as inexpensive as possible for for everyone to be a member that wants to be. What about the seminars and classes? I know you've had a few so far. We've had a few. We haven't charged anything so far. In the future, um, I mean, definitely if the class is like using, you know, some sort of material, um, we're going to have to charge accordingly. And we probably will have a small fee, most of which will go to the teacher of the class just to, just to provide an incentive um, mm-hmm. for, for teachers to, you know, donate a lot of their time and come in here and teach. So is this a common concept? I mean, is this sort of like, is it, is it, it's not a franchise, obviously, because it's a nonprofit, but is it other maker spaces uh, around the area, or around the country where you can kind of use as a template, or is it all, you know, it, where it's, I'm trying to think, it's sort of like a book club, is that, you know, people set up book clubs right. all over the place, and it's pretty much the same model, which is, well, yeah. in that case, it's a bunch of women getting together, drinking wine, and not reading books. Yeah. So, there is like a nationwide, worldwide maker movement, so to speak, and just about every major city in the States has at least a few maker spaces. Mm-hmm. Uh, Baltimore, for instance, has, I think, about four. Do you really? Yeah. So do you interact with each other, or is it just pretty much like you're on a Reddit sub thread, subreddit or something like that? So or? when we were uh, trying to figure out our path forward for from establishing this space, we, we went up and toured a lot of the the local spaces. Uh, well, not local, but area spaces mm-hmm. in Baltimore. And I think... There's there's not a ton of cooperation and collaboration, but there is there is some. I mean, there's there's national fairs for for these kind of spaces that people go and show off some of their projects or learn about new technologies and that kind of stuff. So it's all pretty much the same concept wherever you go. It's just a it's a cooperative space where people can come and build things and everything. Yeah, there's a scale within that. You know, there's um, you could be just a group of friends that run out of space together and aren't don't, aren't really formal and they're pretty organic and whatever happens happens and then there's all the way to kind of more the professional level spaces like the foundry or open works up in baltimore where they have you know 30 40 000 square foot facilities with you know machine tools that are cost 
north of a hundred grand and that that kind of stuff. Well, you guys, are, you, you have a pretty good setup here. I mean, for someone who's not that particularly handy, but I see like saber saws and, and jigsaws and three D printers and that circular thing that you spin wood on and a lathe, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Look at it's that. Lit. Yeah. They all yeah. just lit up when I said that because yeah. they're so proud of me. It's like, <laughs> hey, should, it's should like my dad was across. He just, oh yes, he's a man. I kind of like <laughs> the circular thing sort of moniker. Was there a circular thing? <laughs> well, I think we should call it. A- oh, there's one circular saw. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you guys are very well equipped. So any of those donations or part of the donations? Um, so a lot of the equipment actually uh, belongs to members that they just brought in for the community to use, which is nice. Like I said, that big 3D printer behind you, that was a donation from Amtech. Um, oh, pretty generous. That's a pretty significant Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a couple can't, years can't. old, but uh, so it's like a $20,000 machine. It's huge. There, so. I can't tell you. It's uh, I gotta pick, We're going to post a picture in the show notes so you guys yeah. can see this, but it's, it's absolutely amazing. You got whiteboard boards for all the creative output. Yep. Well, this is this is absolutely amazing space. So, with the seminars that are coming up, do you have anything planned, or are you still kind of taking suggestions from people as to what they want to have? Yeah, we're still taking suggestions, and we're also looking for volunteers to teach the uh, classes. I mean, we usually have a open house. I think it's been bi-weekly so far. We and had one a couple days ago, yeah, Sunday. Days so it was ago. like the, the 24th. Yeah, and we actually probably had 23rd. close to uh, 20 people here. Did you? So I was, uh, I was surprised how many people came out. So um, people want to come and check it out because you can find you guys have a Facebook page. So find yeah. the, the Makerspace Annapolis and yeah. you've got a Facebook page. Yeah, it's just yeah, Annapolis Makerspace if you search for yeah, that. Yeah, so, so get on that and you have a website that's just up. Um, yeah, it's uh, makeannapolis.org. Right, yeah. So and that just came up the other day. So it kind of gives you an overview of the way it works and who's involved and what they're going to be doing. There's a calendar mm-hmm. on there to show you uh, what they're going to be doing. Yeah. So, what if someone just wants to come and check it out? I mean, that that'd be okay. That's, yeah. So, if they you're not gonna be like that gym guy where there's a, you know, he's taking you on the tour and giving you the high pressure. No, no, so, not at all. Or it's like the hot chick in the leotard. Yeah. Like, woman, no, we're so. uh, we're pretty we casual don't have here. Any of those, yeah, yeah, yes. uh, yeah. They get, well, free, they get free membership if they. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you have to worry about it. Just, and um, everyone's faces just fell. Yeah, the uh, they can come to a uh, open house, um, or if they just send send us an email or join our uh, Slack group if they're familiar with what Slack is on the internet. Um, oh, it's Robert's always pushing Slack. It's some sort of project based thing. Right. It's he asked me every like week, a, is you on Slack? Like, no. Yeah. It is basically just a, a chat room. So if you think about AOL Instant Messenger uh, twenty years ago, that's what it that's oh, what it time is. traveling. Nice. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just send send a message or email, and uh, I'm sure one of the members would, would be fine uh, meeting you here on a weeknight or weekend. Well, this is a really cool idea. I'm, I'm really impressed on the, kind of looking around and everything, uh, all the tools you have, and you're sharing the space here. It's a long facility with high ceilings, and then off to one side, there's about, I don't know, 30 or 500 square feet that's that's kind of walled off with paper saying do not come back here very sensitive yeah yeah so we share the uh in order to you know be able to do this financially we're actually sharing the space with a aerospace uh startup company um they're actually developing micro satellite launch technology so they're building something right there yes a uh, prototype device can we look uh no you cannot can we touch it Uh, as given instructions that you cannot like me in particular or yeah, just you. Yeah. No, all right. no, so, no, none of the... Uh, so John did call that, it, didn't one of the, That's one of the few rules of the makerspace is you can't go... Don't uh, touch the satellite? Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's kind of strict. Well, so we're going to find you on the website. So mm-hmm. that's uh, Annapolis Makerspace and then your website, which was... Makeannapolis.org. Okay, and we've got a Facebook page too. Okay. Did you know that? And we got a group, so we got two, and you guys just have one. That doesn't mean we're better than you, but I'm just saying we got two, you got one, because we got a, we got a group and we have a page. Okay. We also have Twitter. We're at MD Crafts Podcast on Twitter or at Tim Hamilton forty seven. John's at uh, I Annapolis. I'm forgetting all these because I'm just so impressed with everything. Uh, you can find us at info at the Maryland Crafts. If you want to send us an email, and our website is themarylandcrafts.com. And you can subscribe, of course, on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. And you want to leave us a, a five star review, most likely, guys. And if you guys want to just leave a real nice review there, that just helps us a lot in the algorithms, and we just really appreciate it. But uh, to Jack, Dan, and Russell, uh, this is awesome, and I really appreciate you having me out tonight. No, thanks for coming. Yeah, okay. Thanks, thanks for taking the time. Everyone, check it out. Cheers. Thanks. Great. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. 
Go home. Go. Go.